Hey guys, Turtle here again. So, I wanted to share this with you. I have this old phone here that I've been using for tracking trails and running a trail map up on the mountain here by the house. And I have a mount on the handlebar for it here. It just loosens up here. Lock the phone in there, lock it down, tighten that back up, lock it in place. However, for a day of riding, the phone's been dying on me. And yes, this bike does have a 12 volt accessory here, but all the beating and banging, the plug gets a little loose and you lose signal, got put, reach down, push it back in, all that nonsense. So what I'm doing here today, I'm actually going to install a secondary plug with built-in dual USBs. And I'm going to be using hole saw here same size to go in behind and I'm going to mount this right in behind the original 12 volt plug and tap into the original power source these don't draw that much power just to charge a cell phone so and I rarely ever use that so I don't think it'll be an issue I could theoretically just switch it out but I'd want to keep that there for the air pump because I do keep a small 12 volt air pump along with some tire plugs and uh, tire handles in the spare box back here in case you get a flat tire or anything I can try to plug that tire and still have an air compressor to air it up so I definitely want to keep that there for that and then like I said this plug here is going to go right behind it to charge the phone while I'm running it and keep it powered on while I'm using the app. Now, I am not endorsed by these guys. They have no affiliation. This just happens to be the map that I'm using. Trail View, if you guys ever use it, it's pretty cool. I know there are a few others out there. Show you guys what I'm doing here. This here is some of the tracking I have already done. And I set a few waypoints of what was where. Set a few areas, switchbacks and whatnot going along the side of the mountain. And this act here where it says tower, there was a uh, cell phone tower and that's where the battery actually died. It's taking a little bit to actually load up the uh, grid lines and everything to show the mountain range, the satellite view. But anyways, it's a pretty cool app. It works really well for what I use it for. But the thing is, I need to keep power going to it to keep the mapping going all day. Especially since I'm trying to track my own maps. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. First thing I'm going to do is... Well, first get my GoPro out of the way there, my case. But I'm going to take this off and the cover here. I'm going to make for sure that I don't have any loose wires behind here. I don't believe there is, but I'm going to make sure so I don't cut into them. And then I'll drill my hole in that area, tie in the wires, put everything back together. Should be good to go. We'll do a quick test on it and go from there. All right, now that we got the hole there, we can go ahead and set the plug in place, make sure everything's nice and tight, and then we can run the wires and get her nice and secure inside. Okay, guys, and this is what I was talking about here. That's the old one in there. I've got the new hole here for the new plug coming in, and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these. I'm going to tie the wires in together. I'm going to use one set of wires to run both plugs, but again, I'll rarely use this plug, but it is there as an emergency backup for that air compressor if I need it. So, not worry about drawing too much current through one set of wires.
make sure that's good and tight right there and guys if you do this make sure you pay attention where you're going to put yours in how long your socket is so you don't run into the bend right here in the plastic get in the way drill your hole for no reason have to end up repositioning it i didn't pay attention to that that's close but i can still make it work with that And looking at it from this side, you can see I actually positioned it very similar to the original one, just a little further down the grade there, but they both pop open in the same demeanor. Now let's go ahead and get it wired up. Alright guys, so from what here, what I've done is I actually took two tails, got two positives, two negatives, and I ran them into, <clears throat> excuse me, a pair of spade connectors. And I will be able to plug those directly into the factory plugs on the bike. So I didn't have to cut into those at all. I didn't want to cut into the factory harness any more than absolutely necessary. So this way, I can plug these in. And again, I've got both negative and positive leading to both terminals. I am going to put some heat shrink around this to hold that together better for the riding. And don't forget your dielectric grease if you guys decide to try this as well. All right, guys, from here, I have the heat shrink on on the adapters where I just put the uh, the spade terminals on there where the wires are running in. I'm going to go ahead and put some heat to them and heat those down. Then I'm going to plug those into the machine. And then I'll plug those onto both of the accessory terminals on the bike. It is important guys not to leave the heat focused on one specific spot for too long otherwise you'll end up melting some of that down create a soft spot while the other parts still cool so you want to get smooth circulation with your heat all over the area so now we're going to go ahead and put these on the bike all right again here's the original factory harness and i'm going to plug my red into red and then my black into the black. Make sure those are good and snug. Now I can take these ends and put them on the accessories. And before I do that, I am going to add some electric grease to them. And this is what I'll be using Electra Seal. Severe duty. It's good silicone grease for your electrical applications. And it don't take much. I'm just going to put a little dab inside of each of these here. I believe this tube is just about empty. There we go. Get some in there, and when I plug that in, it'll actually help shove some more of that deeper inside. Now I'll take the other one. Make sure that's in there. And then we'll come to the other set of terminals and do them as well. There's positive. Negative. Now let's plug them up. And 
And guys, if you look at the back of your accessories, they're typically labeled like I've got the negative here and the positive here. This one is negative down here, positive over here. Make sure you get your wires hooked up right if you're doing this job so that you don't get them cross and have a short, start melting wires, blowing fuses. All right, everything's hooked up here. So I'm gonna set this back on the bike, do a quick test fire and make sure power is circulating smooth. As long as that's getting power, then I'll go ahead and hook it up to the phone, make sure that the phone is getting power through the cord here. And as long as everything's functioning well, we'll go ahead and button everything up. There's the key. Power to the bike. That is lit up, so we do have power there. And plug in the cord for the phone. And so you can see, I'm not going to be pressing power button. Or the volume buttons, no buttons. I'm just going to plug this in. And you can see right there, she is charging. So we do have power to there. And I'm going to do a quick test on that one as well. And then we'll button everything back up. All right, guys, as you can see, that is still lit up. This is the battery charge, or excuse me, the, uh, mini air compressor I was talking about it also has a low emergency light if you need that tire gauge but I'm going to go ahead and plug this in plug that in there it is we got power and we still have power to our secondary accessory I just installed so we are good I'm going to go ahead and button this up and call it done okay guys so just a quick recap this is my GPS that I've been using, using a application. You can use whichever you want. They have Onyx Off-Road, TrailView, Players Ride Command. There's a few others out there. Take your choice. But uh, I happened to stumble upon the TrailView uh, before I did the other ones. So that's just the one I've been using by default. But anyways, the point to all this, this whole video, was the phone was dying while I'm trying to use it as GPS. And I did not like using the original accessory as, again, beating and banging on the trails. The plug for the cord was getting loose in there. Never actually fell all the way out on me, but it got loose enough that it lost connection. So while you're riding, you're reaching over, plugging it back in. And I know it's petty, but it's annoying for me anyways. So I went ahead and installed a second secondary here. This one has two USB ports in it, so I can actually charge my main phone as well as my GPS or anything else I decide to put on there. And I just tapped in with pigtails so that I could keep that one as well, the original, what is also known as a cigarette lighter, the 12 volt accessory, so that I could hook up the, uh, the miniature air compressor in the event of a, getting a flat. Like I said, I do have tire plugs to plug a tire if I absolutely need to and have their compressor get air in there and go on my way so i've got both those wired up that was the whole purpose of this video if you decide to do it guys just take your time make sure you pay attention to what you're doing make sure your wires are good and tight uh use dielectric grease seal them up really good with some heat tape and for the most part uh make, make sure you got your wires connected properly positive positive negative negative that's a very common mistake get in a rush and just not pay attention to what's touching what just make sure you get them wired up properly. And if you've been following my channel for a while now, the last video I had done, I installed a secondary battery. I have two batteries on this machine. One underneath in the typical factory location and one inside this box here. It's a little bit of a mess in there. And with the accessories, the light bars, the rock lights, etc., I have multiple terminals stacked up on top of the battery terminal. And I don't like that at all. So I got these new bus bars in and I'm going to install those in that secondary battery area. 
and I can run each one of my connections off of each of these bus bars rather than just stacking one, two, three, four, five uh, plugs all on top of one battery terminal. It, it's not safe. It, it can cause a short. It, worst case scenario can cause a fire. I'd rather just not deal with it. So I'll be installing these in here on my next video. So stay tuned for that as well. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you like the content I'm bringing you, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Watch the channel. If you see anything you like, hit that like button. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for your support.